Hey everybody, welcome back to the quest for the bestest. We're talking about the best picture nominees of 2021. We are almost finished. We only got a couple more films to talk about, but today we're going to be spot speaking over Emerald Fennell's Promising Young Women from last year. An interesting pick for uh, for a number of regards, and well, well, we'll talk a lot about it, but we got to go over what went down, what transpired in the previous episode. We talked about David Fincher and his film Mank, and even though Tanner quite likes David Fincher, he didn't quite like the film, and the rest of us really didn't quite like the film, <laughs> and so it ended up at the bottom, number five. So the list as it stands right now is Sound of Metal, Judas and the Black Messiah, um, the Father, Minari, and then Mank. Where will Promising Young Woman land on this list? I have no idea. I have my idea of where it goes, but we have got to have a discussion and come to a vote to decide where it ends up. So let's just start right off by talking about the movie. Someone want to lead us in? I'll go first. Do it. Okay. Uh, I, I enjoyed Promising Young Woman a lot when I watched it, and, and I still mm -hmm. enjoy aspects of it. I think it's a visually arresting film. I think it's a film with a lot of style and a lot of interesting ideas. But I don't really think that its story or thematic material hold up at all to a moment's um, retrospective observation after you finish the film. I, okay. the, the more I think about it, the less I like it. I think it, it makes a strong initial impression, but it starts to fall apart after that. There you go, uh, Tanner. I would, I tend I tend to agree with Abram on that uh, to to an extent. I'm sure, and as we'll get into the minutia of what exactly we think, but. Uh, Tucker and I watched this in a in a theater back in uh, January, and we both come out, we both came out of it pretty high on it. You know, Abram's right; it does make quite the impression initially. It it is a very uh, encapsulating film. Uh, but on a rewatch for this, um, I'm a little lower on it. I still enjoyed it overall, but um, I can definitely acknowledge more, some of the flaws that the film has. Mm hmm. I'm gonna say that knowing I already know what Tucker's opinion is about this movie. Um, I, I agree pretty much wholeheartedly. Um, and while I think that the, the fundamentals are pretty good on this film, um, and elements like the soundtrack are great, the story just mm -hmm. falls apart. And, and the thematic material is not only questionable, but and an antithesis to what the film was trying to be. And so, um, you know, there's... There's room to, to talk there, and I think we're going to end up spending a lot of time talking about theme. I think it's going to be a theme mm -hmm. episode. Cause that's what this, theme heavy. That's, what, yes. the, uh, that's what, what I think the discussion about this film really is about. So, Tucker? So, I allow myself the, the luxury of re-ranking and re-rating things as I think about them over time. And as you say, there are certain films where you'll come off of it high, it'll lower over time, whatever, if you rewatch it, stuff like that. We saw this film a couple months ago. I think it was one of the first Best Picture nominees I saw, actually. Uh, and we rewatched it last night for, for this review. And at the time, I came off of it, and I was like, wow, 9 out of 10, amazing film. Watched it last night. Holy shit, 9 out of 10, amazing film. I liked it even more the second time. Mm. I have it in my top 50 favorite movies of all time. It is blowing my load here, clearing away my favorite of the Best Picture nominees. And I think that everything it does is so incredibly strong, and I think it tells a very interesting message and is so solid in all of its filmmaking fundamentals and everything I look for out of coming into a film. It... it it blows it all away and ties it up with a really impactful set of moments that I still think about to this day. It's, I think it's probably the second most emotionally impactful film I've ever ha had an experience with. Wow. So I want to ask you. I, Avengers Endgame. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh I want to ask you, Tucker, what is the message of this film then? Let's, let's, let's get into it and let's talk about what this film is saying and where it comes from <laughs> as a genre. Um, and then, you know, we'll get around to talking about cinematography and the actors and, and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But I, I just want to I just want to get right in talking about the story and the theme. So since you liked it so much and since I think you've got the highest opinion of it, why don't you give us the uh, give us the rundown on what happens and uh, and what it all means to you, at least. For me, the tonal and thematic aspect of the film is best looked at 
at least from what how I viewed the film, both of my times going through it, is sort of reframing what you expect out of a revenge story and what you expect out of the morality of it, of characters, of the people in your life, of society, and the way it puts weight on on crim and crimes and the issues that people have, and and balancing that all between you know what perspective is on said crimes on on said issues with different people, and and. I find it so interesting to watch a film that is unafraid to put the co the content out there to make you uncomfortable and be like, look, this is happening around you. And it's, it, I think the theme is sort of be, being unafraid to show what's uncomfortable because it's important to show because it's real. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a thesis statement. This is the theme kind of guy, but I can, I can. Okay, well, run what, circles around my concept of it, I guess. Literally, what what's the plot of the movie? That's a that's a good start place to start. Casey Mulligan plays Cassandra. Carrie or Carrie Carrie Mulligan, Carrie Mulligan plays Cassandra. I I don't know why I got that mixed up. Um, <laughs> a a almost thirty year old, and then she turns thirty during the movie, so a thirty year old, mm -hmm. um, who goes and acts drunk in front of men in bars to get them to like try to take her home and and be and then like and then the men puts take, the she puts the fear of god in them she by, puts the by, fear of god by, in by, reveal, by revealing that she's not in fact drunk uh she does after it they were about and, to take advantage of her in a, in, a, yes. in a very horrible way um and and then she meets a guy from from her med school which she dropped out of and this story unfolds about trauma in in her past life as a as a student in med school relating to a friend of hers who was raped and ostensibly killed themselves um later on and there's a the film un, un, unfolds from there so so if if i can jump in here timo i i think that there's a couple different spheres that this film operates in and to tucker's point i think it's a pretty subversive and interestingly constructed rape revenge film but I think the problem is that, uh, Tucker, you brought up Endgame, so I'm going to bring up Joker, unfortunately, a movie oh, I hate. Right. My oh, problem no. with Promising Young Woman and Joker are, are parallel uh, in the fact that I think the film does, is, is, does a disservice to its very important thematic material. Mm. I think it really falls off of a cliff with its ending in terms of what it's trying to say about sexual assault and the cultures around it. I think that its portrayal of of uh, Carrie Mulligan's character is, is very confused and not very productive. I, I think that the film sacrifices what could have been an interesting message and an important message for a kind of surface level and subversive and surface level thought provoking thriller that ultimately does not serve its material the way that it I think had a responsibility to. As it was promoted, as it would. The I I I, w I would classify my viewing of the whole deal as like this movie's kind of girl boss, in a sort of like taking a subversive, a countercultural idea and then molding it into a very mainstream and very not um, subversive ending. This film has, I I just according to me. Has a really terrible ending. This film takes a left turn that makes very little sense to me in terms of what is actually trying to be said. Yeah. Do you guys want to start? Do you, do you guys want to start at the end? Because that is Let's where start I at feel the most end. most sure. of the most of the disagreement over the where overall else would we start? The overall themes of this movie stem from the problems with it stem from the ending. Uh, if I may, um, you may. I think. Um, I think that this movie really show the ending, especially, uh, shows the complicated nature in ways that even like retribution around trauma isn't complete. It's not we, because people say, "Oh, we talked about uh, this movie with our with a friend last night, and he said I wish that she had killed these men that she was tricking this whole time to be, and that would make it the film fit into the more uh, more laid out pattern of of rape revenge movies where." Uh, the victim goes back and kills her attackers. Uh, but this movie does change that up a little bit and sort of states that there really is no true triumph over trauma. And they it says that by um, making 
uh, Cassandra, essentially a martyr uh, for th for these crimes that happened against her friend Nina. Um, I actually I actually enjoy that quite a bit. I can I can, I totally understand critiques of that, but I think uh, narratively, I think it worked out pretty well. So if I can jump in here and offer a counterpoint, my problem yeah. is not that she gets killed. I think that that's a really interesting and important aspect what the film was going for until Ryan gets the text messages with all of the evidence and everything. Because had the film ended on Al's wedding, it would have been a very potent and very real message about mm -hmm. the lack of repercussions for men, college age, well-educated men in these sort of sexual assault rapes and these allegations and the things that they actually did do but never get held accountable for. But instead, the film undercuts that for what I feel is a very cheap ending, which puts which which puts the film thematically and narratively in a very strange place where ultimately it feels surface level again. We I think we had a moment to sort of intersect a more mainstream narrative with a really important thematic thread. But instead, we take a a last second twist, which which ended up, I think, taking all of the weight out of an otherwise important moment. I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna go ahead and just spoil everything right now. The last second twist is that she contacts a lawyer that now feels bad about prosecuting, um, about defending the the men accused of of raping Nina, and then goes ahead and sends him. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be at this bachelor party this weekend. If I disappear, this is where I was. Here is the phone with the video of my friend being raped in college. You know what to do. And then she sets up some texts. And then at the wedding, we see the cops. The cops come in and do the final, yeah. do yeah. The final revenge getting. And yeah. for me, the film sets up that, okay, authorities are not really the good guys here. They aren't the ones who believe the women. They aren't the ones who you know take into account all this other stuff that goes on in, in regards to why a, a girl would have dropped out, why she would have killed herself. And there's, it's very convenient at the end when she's like, oh, I think she was unstable. Maybe she's wanting to hurt herself. The, the parents were saying that. And then the way I view it is if you're going to be countercultural, why do you end the film with the cops? Why do you involve the criminal justice system in the country, which we know full well does not really care about the, the rights of, of women and the, the, the correct interpretation? You know, she was justified, I think, in most of her actions that she did in the film, you know, regardless if. I think I have some other things to say about it, but why does the film go and give over this important personal case to the criminal justice system? And if yeah. you think about it literally, the, the dude has a case to not go to jail. He was acting in self-defense. She was going to cut him open. She's going to inscribe some stuff. She's going to hurt him. And so it's not a cut and dry that this is a good ending. And it's, it's very unsatisfying. And like Abram said, it very undercuts the message of the film. I think if the film just you lob off the, the last five, six minutes, I think it would have been very thought provoking and, and interesting to say. But the I just really hate the inclusion of the cops. Like, why do you have to bring the cops into this? They're not going to do the right thing. Yeah, I think you are. Uh, that is the one drawback of that ending. Uh, the one yeah. major drawback, in fact, because uh, it seems that uh, in, in every other case, Emerald Fen is it Fennel or Fennel? We should probably I don't I don't know. Pick one. We're going to go with we're going to go with Fennel. Actually, let's go with Fennel. Emerald, I'm sorry if you get your name wrong. We're, no, we're, we're idiots on the internet, and you're probably never going to watch this. So we're sorry anyway. Uh, but Emerald Fennel, she really uh, wants to make the ending a bittersweet sort of thing. Like I said, there's no true triumph over trauma. Uh, but yeah, the inclusion of the, uh, the legal authorities as like, and they're getting led away in handcuffs, which is a good image to... to uh, to see the, on screen the guy's very but, visibly upset about it and the, and the, the wedding yeah. goers are unhappy but but abram is correct in saying that yes uh, if you put a little bit of thought into it real world thought into it you're like well th from what we know about legal authorities and what we've seen about authorities in this film uh th there's there's an avenue that um these events could transpire down that uh al does not get convicted of of anything truly so I actually, I think I just need to subvert all of this, and maybe I can reframe the ending in a more positive light, because I mm -hmm. think it really does fit the tone, the theme, and the pacing that the film is going for with the motivations of its main character. You have that secondary twist where the tech gets sent out, because 
what you've been seeing throughout the entire film is her set up these plans, go through with it, psychologically, like, you know, mess with people's heads to make them realize what they're doing was wrong, and end it with that kick in the balls of, no, that you really were wrong. And that's what the text is. Now, the cops showing up, you know, justice system not capturing the guy, not getting what we really should think he should deserve. Uh, us, almost aside, I don't want to completely put that aside because I think you are making good points. I think that is not necessarily about the video. It's more about the murder. Is if she went missing and she was there and he has, the, the lawyer has the information that she's been missing and, and he can send the cops to that place. Why, he, of course, he's a lawyer. Why wouldn't he send the cops there? I think that does make logical sense but, if someone went missing and he has information to her whereabouts, of course the cops are going to show up. But if you can write a movie that's a rape revenge thriller, why would you not have your main character take the final and ultimate revenge? Um, well, I, I think I think that's the thing is maybe the murder, maybe that he gets off with that, but she does get the last laugh in the fact that she sent out the text to everyone in the contacts. And that is the nail in the coffin of, hey, now everyone knows about this. Now it's out there. And she's been doing that with each of the characters that she was doing her plans to throughout the entire film and and really closing it off that even if she, you know, had to die for this, these people's lives are irreparably changed because of the poor actions they ch chose to do when they were younger. I think that reading isn't exactly apt because you say she gets the last last laugh which we see we, we're supposed to think that she does but again abram's point of if you think about it a little bit she's still dead she's still lost she lost her life that's that that is truly the and i that's why i think that the the ending of the movie is supposed to be bittersweet it's there's there's no triumph over uh trauma that you experienced or someone else close to you did um but yeah i don't think that we're supposed to feel we shouldn't have to feel like she got the last laugh, even if that's what the writer intended. Let's let's even go beyond that. Let's let's walk back in, in the narrative a little bit to where um, to where she visits Nina's mother, and Nina's mother tells her to drop the whole thing. In mm -hmm. the context of that plot thread, it, Cassie is is appropriating this onto herself, and the the film ends with her going against the wishes of the mother in the context of the narrative in, in a way that paints her as a very strange figure. I think that the film, especially towards the end, completely shatters Cassie as a character. They throw in this really unproductive and underdeveloped mental health storyline. They, they, they go against what Nina's mother wants, and then the film just ends. It, it wants to end on that triumphant note, Tucker. I think you're right, but I think that if you start to link that to the, to the thematic material of the film, to the real world story this is trying to tell. Because keep in mind, this is an Oscar nominated film about, about rape and rape culture, which is very important. Mm -hmm. You link it, you link it to the characters surrounding Cassie earlier in the film. You link it to all these things and it just falls apart. I, I think that this film had a responsibility not only to its thematic material, but to its characters to treat this film a little bit better than as a a stylistic gotcha th that that wants to be this sort of subversive thriller with an interesting script and i think it is in some respects but i just don't think that's what this film should have been now i would say that i do I, I i have to disagree on it destroying her character in the second half because i think that what it sets up is this really complex person who has been doing something so important to her for so long that it's impossible for her to fully let go she tries her hardest to let go we have the set of sequences where she's given up but she's pulled back in when something proves to her that what she's been doing the entire time her the last whatever 10 years she was justified in doing that and there's proof now the proof is is there in literal video evidence that this is that her actions have more weight to them than she maybe even initially thought and that mm -hmm. with the reframing of her one good relationship in her life it breaks her back to what she was before and makes her snap she was not the one who was raped of course her entire life was upended because of this and she had to help her friend but she's doing the revenge for someone else because she's a very complex person whose whose mind has been reframed in not necessarily a productive way but i don't think it needs to be productive to show the impact of trauma show the impact of helping someone else and and having all your relationships destroyed and separating yourself for a cause but for something that sets you apart from everything else she's mm -hmm. she's a complex character and the ending i think 
frames that as it's set up through the rest of the film. Of course, it's going against what the mom wants, but in the end, her mind is more set on what she thinks is best, and that's how the character has been the entire the entirety of the script. So I so, don't think that fits her character. So I agree with you in, in, in broad strokes, and I, and I like her characterization for a lot of the film. My issue is that a lot of what you're saying, I think, has to be extrapolated out of an ending that does not provide that. The second half of the film, I think, strips away almost all of Cassie's character nuance and that complexity, and then ends the film before any of it can be unpacked. I, I like what you're talking about, about the idea of that horrible realization when you see her watching the video and you can hear them mention Rye. And I think what you're saying about it, breaking her character is true and interesting, but but the, the, but the supporting characters, the, the ending of the film, the script, it just does not unpack that at all. And, and I think it was important then to actually delve into what happened instead of ending it on a note that sours the character arc and sours the thematic material. I'm almost not happy with somehow with, with if you're gonna if we're gonna take this as a genre film as the rape revenge film, I, I was thinking about this after I was done, and a lot of the revenge, if if it's supposed to be a, a empowering film, is enacted upon other women, and I found that to be a very interesting choice and one that is a little confusing to me. I mean, I guess if you're going to be subversive, then maybe and it's good that you can prove and you can show that it's good that you have that silence is complicitness and it's it's bad. Um, but for the film to focus a lot on on the Cassie's character, like going after women, feels very strange to me. I would have, you know, beyond just the guys in the bars, the actual, you know, incidents that really like matter and and develop the plot further. It was it, those parts also felt misguided to me. Um, I I actually would commend this film on it's because. Uh, it does show that, you know, women can also be implicit in rape culture. And I'd say this is not so much a rape revenge movie, even though it, it in the in the script, it technically is that, but more a movie about rape culture, because that's more what this movie tackles, I feel, in, in its child, in its scenes where Cassie is confronting people who were silent on this, the dean who was uh, who, who was you know, negligent in her treatment of, of Nina. Um, but at the same time, uh, Tima, I see where you're going with this because uh, w one thing I always say is that uh, this movie is full of bad people, like overall bad people, because no matter which way you slice it, Cassie still psychologically tortured uh, Madison, Allison Brie, into thinking that she had been sexually assaulted for days, weeks on end, and mm -hmm. seemingly had no intention of telling her that that wasn't the case. Madison had to confront her in the first place to, for that interaction to happen. So I, I tend to side more towards Tanner here because I think what you're saying about the subversion and the equal, the equal blame being passed around is important. Again, linking to the importance of, of the theme and of, of tackling the subject correctly. I think that it is good that Cassie goes after all those people, but I think what you're saying is it's completely apt. If you're going to be subversive in this way, and create these vignettes and create these moments, you got to do something with them. Mm. But the film doesn't. Cassie is completely above any sort of any sort of reflection on her actions. There is no unpacking of anything she does because she gets killed. And that's interesting. I think it was an interesting moment to kill her. But I think that, th that the film owed its audience an unpacking of its subversion, of its themes, of its characters, of all of this, that it, tr that it trades in for... Uh, what Tucker was talking about being a more plot level, let's have a last moment twist. And I just don't think that that, I, I, the, the film is at odds with itself. As soon as Cassie goes to the bachelor party, the film is at odds with itself and the two halves just tear each other down. Mm. Okay. Well, I'm in a, I, I've got a lot of notes. I have only, only positive notes on my page here because again, and, and I don't want, I, I'm having a hard time getting my points out because i genuinely do think this is the best of the best picture nominees i think it does character writing i think it does pacing i think it does cinematography and 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 editing and all of that so incredibly well and ties it together in this unique package that i think there's a lot more merit to this film there's there's a lot more quality here and in its subversion more uniqueness than i mean i don't know i i i i really don't think it's fair to say this film destroys itself when 
from the perspective of a director who's trying to tell this story, you know, rape revenge we've seen in other films through the eyes of a of a more damaged character who is not the perfect a hero that we want to be following and and it ends in an unsatisfying way but the whole thing is unsatisfying so that that's intentional and seeing these really powerful moments like the the suffocation with the pillow is is what i was talking about when the most em, mostly impacting moments i've ever seen put to film i don't know how they did that i don't know if i want to know it made me sick to my stomach and it left me with more of emotional impact than almost any film I'd ever ha seen before because it was so real and so interesting in the way it portrayed its character. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I'm just putting a lot out there because I, I feel like I've had to sort of step back and let you guys go, but I, I think this film, I mean, I don't know. Let me read some of my notes. I mean, well, well, I'm going to say that about Bo Burnham. I'm going to say that I agree with you on a lot of elements of 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 the style and the fundamentals. I think the acting mm -hmm. in this film is really great. Bo Burnham casting is 90 percent of directing. I don't think he needed to act. I mean, he's just he's <laughs> perfect for that character. Um, yeah. You know, I think that the flashy, the lighting and all that stuff is works really well. There's no elements like in Mank that I really hated from the production. Um, and so but to me, a film is a story. And when you have the film that has all the good fundamentals, but it just it it just defeats itself in the last in the last couple minutes, then it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. You know, if it defeated itself in the beginning, maybe I forget about it by the time I get around to the end. But it's at the end, and so it's what I think about when the film when I'm sitting there on my couch after I finish watching it. Um, and so while I can agree with its merits in production and stuff, I just I I can't see how it's actually a subversive film when its subversion doesn't work. To, to dovetail off of that, Tucker, I agree that I, I love the cinematography. I think there's so many interesting shots here. I really like the film's color palette. I think that its use of, of, of sound it's is really great interesting. It's got the soundtrack. I mean, that, that yeah. Toxic remix, I mean, it was in the trailers, yeah. but like, it's great. It's actually just great, and it fits, and it works. And then, and then I just get distracted thinking about the story. Yeah, that's that's where I wanted to go because like you like like you were both saying, it has these great elements, but ultimately there wasn't anything under that style for me to grab onto because Tucker, you, you talk about it being a purposely unsatisfying narrative. I agree that's what it should have been, but it should have been that on purpose instead of because it contradicted its own theme. I, again, bring back to where I think the film should have ended. It could have ended in a way that had a real world message underneath. The, the 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 style because the style I agree is really interesting and that and that and that uh, asphyxiation sequence is is it's, really hard to watch you, you're you're right about that these things are really great but the but the film it wants to be more than that and and it needed to be I think to elevate itself to get a best picture nomination but all of the elevation is so shaky it ends up crumbling under that which is not to discount the acting the soundtrack the cinematography the color palette the the production design i like even little details like like cassie's nails the way she clicks them together these little character ticks these little decisions are all so interesting but ultimately the the film that's that's a piece of the film this is a film that is about theme and character and plot and that's where the film goes wrong i think um i thought i i have appreciated all the thematic analysis that we're doing but i think in order to give uh, a more complete view where we're not just tearing apart the themes of this or yeah. uh I think we should. I think we should lend a little bit more time to the uh, fundamentals and other aspects of the film, rather than just listing them off as good or not good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the fair. reason I I sort of wanted to pivot, and, and as Tanner was saying, you know, there's there's more to talk about to this film. Is even if those themes didn't work for you guys, I'm going to be honest and say they really did for me, and I'm having a very difficult time understanding where you're coming from. This. I, I, trust me, I'm I'm very much trying. But I think the rest of the film works so well as a written movie in its in its pacing. The way it doles out the backstory of Nina's death, scene by scene, little bits being uh, unveiled and reframing what you saw before and reframing the relationships between characters and the lines that they were saying. Because now you can say, okay, this person knew that. And that's why they said that in that previous scene. And the way the way it's paced out from that respect is incredibly well done from from a t attention perspective and then inside each scene where she's having conversations with people that make them uncomfortable the 
tonal shifts and the tension that builds in those sequences is absolutely incredible. The ways the music drones in, the way the dialogue and the facial expressions change, show the impact in a really raw way that kept me hooked from every sequence. And I, I really felt the tension and, and the thrill, you know, thrill, quote unquote, of emotions being unveiled like that. I think it's it's so tightly done that I have to give the film credit because this is a this is a debut a feature film. I think it, it, she might have done yes. something else, but that's that's incredible that a debut director would, would be able to compose tension building sequences like that and mm -hmm. within a tension building narrative that paces itself out so incredibly well. Yeah, um, I I think that Emerald Fennell yeah is a very talented director and writer. When you when you're tackling a a subject as such as tough as this as complex as this, you're obviously going to make some some missteps, and she did. Uh, but to pivot into some more uh, some some different aspects of the film, I love the casting of this. Uh, Timo shouted that out. Bo Burnham, Fogel, class. Um, the guy who plays Schmidt in New Girl, casting all these guys, casting all these guys, these unconventional uh, male leads and male side characters is great and serves this sort of idea of like, we're not going to do like the the scary guys doing the sexual assault. These are like guys you see on the street. These are guys you work with. These are then quote unquote nice guys, not the Russell Crowe, uh, Ryan Gosling <laughs> nice guys. But the Bo Burnham, the Bo Burnham and McLovin, nice guys, and uh, they what all a do... great, what a great casting yeah. for that sequence. Oh my god! Because not That's only does fun. he do a great job in that scene, you apply your super bad knowledge to that character, <laughs> and you're like, no, I know what this guy's history is like because I watched the whole movie about him, and and it it gives that sequence, you know, unintentionally, but probably intentionally from the casting yeah. director's perspective, a, an extra layer of nuance where you can apply backstory to a character that doesn't have backstory and i think that's incredible casting and directing in that in that regard yeah uh i love the soundtrack the bubblegum pop sort of uh songs that are throughout this we get some paris hilton we get some britney spears well, we get a little uh, charlie Perry, xcx in there too little charlie xcx basically like a a, a 90s uh pop, a, a 90s teen pop dream is what the soundtrack is but uh what did you guys think about some other aspects of the film it's got great moments. I, I think you're right about that. I, I on, on every end of, of the thematic spectrum, the the sort of montage that leads into the the pharmacy dance number is mm -hmm. really fun. I, I think the opening, the if you want to talk about subversion, the opening sequence of the film is is really well done. That that reveal when she sits up sober is great. That said, I I don't think that this film is on the whole as subversive as some of its individual sequences are. Mm. I think it does telegraph pretty early that Ryan is not going to be a particularly great guy. Yeah, that's pretty I, obvious. I, 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 He's I, like, I'll, I don't, drink, I'll drink your spit, m'lady. Mm -hmm. I, I think <laughs> that the film is is not as clever as, as it wants to be all the time. It's cleverest in the smallest moments. When it can get a, a snap reaction, when it can turn a scene on its head, it is clever. But I don't think that the overall progression is. So when I look at the things that I do like about the the film, beyond the casting, production design, soundtrack, it's it's little individual moments that I think are crafted nicely. Yeah, I'm well, gonna production say design. production design, cinematography, motivated color lighting. I just go back oh, to yeah. thinking about the the pharmacy scene. There's this nice soft pink glow on the side of their face that you'd be like, ah, where'd that come from? But earlier you see it's coming from this big giant neon pharmacy indoor site like doesn't <laughs> what make kind any of pharmacy is that it doesn't make any sense like real life but it's cool looking and it and it works and i appreciate yeah. the the cinematography of it a lot um the production design is very is the the parents house was almost like edward oh, scissorhands like to me yeah it's i was very, it, in that house freaks me out a little bit it's very quaint it's very uh candy colored and pastels uh, the, the the set design yeah is very is very consistent and sets a consistent uh, aesthetic and mood for the film and that mood is very well subverted in the scenes like Tucker said when it takes those tonal shifts and it becomes much more serious and intense as the characters re uh, reveal their true motives yeah and I think just on the whole the supporting cast is so they are all interesting in their own ways her, the, her relationship with her parents is absolutely fascinating gives you a lot of context for the character and how she's lived her life like having conversations with the parents might seem from a from a outside perspective of okay the yeah, you know this is just a way to introduce exposition but it's a very natural way to do that and and having sequences like it being her birthday and her not remembering that 
that's a really interesting character trait there is she's so focused on this she doesn't remember her own birthday and then she doesn't have friends and her parents sort of berate her on that and and that relationship is just so fascinating to see in the moments that it shows up and then i think her relationship with ryan whether or not because honestly i did not pick up on my first watch through that he was going to be a bad guy i knew i i you know i thought there was a, a chance but i didn't i didn't know that it was going to be as bad as it got but I think that's so well written in the way that their dynamic grows and has those tension moments that break down their relationship and build it back a little bit stronger. But then when something really, really, really bad happens, it can't come back from that. Mm. And the, the ways you just see their personality bounce off one of another and Bo Burnham is doing Bo Burnham bits in the script, but it just feels like a natural way for this character to be reacting to the world. I, I think it's it's impressive what they did with such an interesting cast of characters all leading back to this one focal point of this complex, messed up character that mm -hmm. you want to like her. She does weird stuff, but and and everyone around her is feeling that exact same way. All of her friends and family members. I just think it's absolutely fascinating. Uh, I have two more quick things I want to shout out. Uh, the from the from a writing perspective, the film is also funny. I mean, obviously you have Bo Burnham in there, but Carrie Mulligan is it can deliver some comedic lines. Uh, Clancy Brown, that whole that whole uh, parental, uh, the dinner sequence is is full of like awkward comedy. So Emerald Fennell, she's also a she's like I said, she's a talented writer. She can write comedy. She can write tension. Uh, and this is a great you know first outing for a, a first big outing for her. Speaking of writing, I also very 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 much love the Alfred Molina scene. He's the he's the retired yeah. lawyer. I like his whole character. I like the whole writing in that scene how it's the third interaction and how it subverts like Cassie getting revenge in the last two and her being surprised by this guy and his grief around what he's done in his past. I love that entire sequence. Alfred Molina is a great actor in that scene. And yeah, that's probably my favorite scene of the entire movie, actually. I think that the Dean's wow. office one is also in so incredibly well written in the way that it reveals that mini story within the story yeah. throughout the pace of that scene and reframing that character throughout the course of just one scene i, I don't know i i really yeah. i really think it's incredibly well done do okay do well, you want to do closing thoughts yeah we can do closing thoughts or i i've i've been gathering some votes here i'm just waiting on mm -hmm. one misters over here who likes to ignore his text messages um trying to focus on the conversation bro it's, okay it's, it's okay it's okay but also, um, I already revealed my placement. I so. did. I did yeah. guess that that's where you're going to put it. So I do have a number. Um, if you guys want to hear it, yeah, let's let's hear that and then let's do closing. I thoughts. prefer not to hear the number. Yeah, I don't want. Oh, okay. It. All right. So Fair enough. our placement number is three point seven five. Ah. So that would I go see. go. I was I was spelling. I was drawing it out in the air with my fingies. That goes. Mm -hmm. at, that would go at place four. So one above Mank. Um. So the 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 vote breakdown goes Tucker put it at number one, Abram put it at number four, and Tanner and I put it at number five. Oh, really? I thought I would have thought that uh, Abram would have put it lower than us, but can you, um, sure. I think, well, I mean, we you, we can look at it holistically or we can look at it as as, um, as a sum of its parts. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I think there's a lot of different ways. I mean, what do we think about that placement in terms of... I'd now that I'm reflecting on it, I'd be okay with going up a spot because I think that we you can have much more interesting conversations around this film than you can about something like Minari, which is below, correct? Yeah, it's between Minari and Mank. Uh, so I'd be okay with with bumping it up a spot just for the fact that it's different. Uh, you can have conversations about whether certain aspects of it worked or not, and it's much more interesting to talk about than maybe most of the movies on this list. So personally, I do not want to move it up anymore. I, and I, I think considering we have two fives and a four, I am not sure three is the most appropriate place for it. For me, I, I think that this is, this is a really confused film. I, I, don't, I don't see a lot of clarity here. Even these, great, these sequences are great, but what do they say about any of these characters? What do they amount to? And ultimately, they amount to, uh, well, well, whatever. Maybe they amount to a twist ending. Maybe they amount to a thematic point. Maybe they don't. We were talking about this being a directorial debut, and I think it kind of shows. I think that there is a lot of sloppy work here that does not take away from the, the, the production design, the, the cinematography, these elements we've been hammering home. It doesn't take away from the success within individual sequences, but I don't think this amounts to anything particularly great. 
The reason that I'm confident putting it at four is because I just Mank is a beast of its own creation. Mm-hmm. I, I, think, I think there is a lot of interesting potential here, but I think the 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 execution really soured me on it from a plot perspective, from a theme perspective, and I think these these films that tackle such serious topics that do not get talked about in this way in mainstream cinema deserve more respect than this film gave them. And I think that as a, as a best picture winner, it doesn't have the sort of control over its material that I wanted to see. So personally, I think that four is a good spot on the back of its, on the back of its successes, but mostly in due to the fault of the weaknesses, which we have as a group been, been really espousing over the, the whole conversation. Yeah. I would have to agree with Abram um, that I think, I think Minari is, is actually, is a, is a pretty good film, and while we we talked, uh, we had a big discussion about the the pluses and the cons of it. I think that as when I look at this film at at Promising Young Women with the um, woman, woman, just one, one, woman, just one woman with with <laughs> with the ending, it it really does leave a bad taste in my mouth, and that really colors all of my thinking about the film because, as I've said, the like the thematic material misses by so much that it, it makes me question, you know, I think Abram's exactly right, that it doesn't quite have a control on itself. With another pass on the script, with, with another, with a little bit more revision there, maybe with a little bit of cutting towards the end to leave it in suspense. What it, what it, what will happen? The dudes come together and they say, I'm going to, we're going to work it together and we're going to get, we're going to get through this and it's going to be okay. And then it ends. What happens there? And it's like, a, it's, a, it's left up to interpretation, but with such a concrete ending, it does a disservice to itself in and its themes with this you know with these inclusions of these elements that i feel are a little you know they they come out of left field a little bit towards the end of the film and i think the ending is convenient yeah. i think i think the the stuff with the with the parents and with the lawyer and it is is can can be written better and um and it doesn't it doesn't work so that's why i i think that that stuff really even though i hated lots of mank i think it puts it just a little bit below because I think there's a there's a slight damaging element to this film, even if it's you know because it does this disservice to all these other films that we don't hear about. We we very rarely hear about the rape, rape revenge genre, and and if this is the film that everyone is like, oh, rape revenge, it's promising young women, then well, what are they going to be? In, what are they going to think about all the other films that that have? that can really add to this conversation a lot. And I think it does add to the conversation. I think there's a lot of good elements, but just that, the ending just, it just really, really messes with the whole film to me. So, yeah, I mean, just to close things off, I I have been convinced through this discussion that the ending is more controversial and, and less tied up things with a bow than, than I had initially let on. That being said, I'm, I can't, let my i can't let my all positive notes be colored by the fact that other people disagree with me from a different perspective because i'm watching this from my perspective and i'm watching it and the word going through my head the entire time is focus this film is focused on its characters it's focused on telling an interesting complex story that paces itself out so well and ties everything together in a really intricate way. Whether or not the ending is satisfying to you, I think it it is paced so interestingly and tells such an interesting story about such a complex character that I have to commend it on everything. This is my, my 40th favorite movie that I've ever watched. I think that it is so impactful in the way that it portrays its themes and its characters and the moments. And on top of that, having such incredible fundamentals amazing performances from an amazing cast of characters being so well shot and and edited together and with amazing music it's it's kind of everything i want out of a film like this and it shows me what a film can do to be emotionally impactful on a more intricately complex character level um i think this is pretty again far and far and away one of the be- the best of the year it's my favorite movie of the year and uh, I'm I'm fine with putting it low because, of course, this is you know this is a democracy. I gotta gotta concede the vote, but uh, I I really think that it it's a more interesting story than most of the th- films we've seen this year. And I would obviously push for it to be higher, but I have to concede in the end. So okay, well, um, 
There well, we have I it. Didn't give my, I didn't oh. give my closing thoughts. Oh, well, I'm going to exclude <laughs> Tanner now. Okay, Tanner, give us your closing thoughts. Okay. Um, the, reason I, the reason I wanted to talk about uh, some other aspects of the film is that this film is obviously going to get caught up a lot in, in, in its themes. And uh, that's unfortunate because I still think that Emerald Fennell is a fantastic writer and director. All the aspects of the film that we talked about outside of the themes are very well done. And I think um, people should lend more credence to those than they should the themes. Although themes is still incredibly important um, because you can't remove this film from the real world aspects of, of, of rape culture and uh, cases that we, we hear about all the time. I mean, the title of the film is an allusion to the Brock Turner uh, sexual assault case. But um, th this isn't, people are kind of, I think that people are kind of treating this like it's the end all be all of rape culture, new rape revenge movies, when it's not. It's really the big, the first big one in the modern zeitgeist. And uh, I think that that's why this film is important. Uh, I think when you're dealing with a, a topic like this, a complex topic, a, a such a sensitive topic as this, you're going to make missteps and you should be critiqued on those missteps. And I think we did a good job of doing that in this review. But at the same time, I still think that Emerald Fennell had a pretty clear vision of uh, a, a bittersweet sort of ending, a sort of a, a nuanced sort of ending that she wanted to go for for this film. And I think she accomplished it to an extent. Uh, the, the, the reliance on authority is obviously an issue. Um, some different aspects of Cassie's character are kind of an issue and how she treats other people and how she's treated. But um, I don't know. Overall, I think people, uh, I, I'm not going to, uh, I don't know. It, it's a complicated film and uh, I, I liked it. What can I say? You know, I, my, my final thoughts were sort of uh, a mess there, but that's what they are. Well, I there guess. you go. Um, Tanner, what are we going to be watching next? Next week, Timo. Thankfully, we can get away from all these political overtones of different films, and we can finally settle, settle down to watch a apolitical film like Trial of the Chicago 7. Wow. Well, it is Oscar season, and the Oscars do mm -hmm. like political films. I'm afraid, if you didn't catch on the sarcasm there, Trial of the Chicago 7 <laughs> is a very political film. It's a trial mm -hmm. movie, correct? It's oh. an Aaron Sorkin. It's about, it's about a court oh. case. It's, about a, it's another Netflix movie. It's got Sasha Baron Cohen. It's got Lots of other people. He's not the headliner. I just, he's the one I remember being in the film the most because I don't know why. But we're going to be here. We'll be talking about it next time. Thank you for joining me. It's a good discussion, even though we disagreed. Um, and I'm glad we got to see each other's points. That's, that's, you know, that's the best we can hope when I go into, a, into this, knowing that there's some wide ranging opinions going to be thrown around. But good time. You know, glad I saw the movie still, even though I didn't quite like it that much. Um, and well, we will see if it wins. We'll see if Tucker gets his wish for it to win Best Picture. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, it's not who, win Best Picture. Who it's fine. knows? So this film's gonna go at the at the number fourth place, one above Mank and one below Minari. And uh, well, we'll be back next time to talk about Aaron Sorkin writing. He didn't direct it, did he? No, he did direct it. Ah, Aaron, he he's a writer. Send us away, our sweet Sorkin boy. Thanks our, for watching, our everyone. Our sweet Sorkin boy will join us next time. Just kidding. He's not a guest on the show. That was a... I wish. Oh, I, wish I, I wish so much. We'll be back to talk about Trial of the Chicago 7. Peace.